In this lesson, we will learn about Maya's aim constraint. An aim constraint locks down an object's rotation so the object can point at another object's position, its pivot. This is a very commonly used constraint for eye rigs, but we can use it for so much more. For instance, an advanced spine rig or vertebrae rig. If you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to take a look at our character rigging for a production course. We also cover that technique in rigging sea creatures in Maya. But let's go ahead and get right into the lesson and learn how to use the aim constraint. We'll head over to our animation module, and under our constraint menu, we'll find the aim constraint, which is directly underneath our point constraint tool. So what we'll do is head over to the aim constraint options, and we will reset our settings. And just use these default settings and learn what the constraint is going to do. So when applying a constraint, you'd first select your target object, the object that will control the object that we would like to tie down. And then the next object you grab will be the constrained object, the object that will be controlled. So at this point, we can go ahead and choose Apply. And you can see that our arrow has shifted based off of our settings in order for the aim constraint to target at what we have specified as our target object. So now if we were to grab the target and start to move this around, you can see that the orientation of the arrow will always follow the target object. So this is really neat stuff. Now you could also see that there's a little bit of twisting as we cross over our scene's origin. So we have settings to to modify to control that type of behavior. But more importantly, let's go ahead and grab our arrow and remove the constraint. We can do that from our outliner. Now more importantly, we'd want the arrow to properly point at our target. I just went ahead and deleted the aim constraint so we could take a look at our problem. You can see the back end of the arrow is pointing at our target. Well, why is that? That has to do with the options we're working with. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. We'll work our way from the, the top of the list down. Now grabbing the object, you can see even though the constraint has been removed, we still keep the values that we have received from the constraint. So if we want to bring the arrow back to default, it's just a matter of zeroing out these parameters. Okay, so the next choice we have is maintain offset. This is going to preserve this object's position while still making the constraint work for us. So if we were to grab our target object and grab the constrained object and choose maintain offset, choose apply, you can see that no longer has the arrow shifted. As we grab the target and start to move that around, we get very similar type of control, but notice the offset that we have. You can see, for instance, here's where our target is, but the arrow is pointing underneath the target. That's simply because of the offset that we have maintained. Now this offset, if we were to grab our constrained object and take a look at our channel box, you can see we can read those offset values from our main channel box attributes, but also, more importantly, underneath our aim constraint node, which Maya creates. So you can see this is the offset that was used to prevent our arrow from shifting. What's great is that we can go in and, and alter and animate on these values, this change, if we'd like, giving us a lot of control over how this constraint will behave. Now, this last option is for removing the weight the constraint has or the control it has. So watch this. By setting this value to zero, we have disabled the constraint. So as we grab our target object and start to move that around, no longer will the arrow follow. However, going back to the constraint object, if we were to set the weight back to 1, meaning 100%, once again we have control over that object's orientation. So again, this is a really neat constraint system. And that weight can be animated, and we can use it for many neat features. 
concerning advanced uh, rigging concepts, we can essentially use this to create dynamic parent systems where we will or will not have an object be controlled by another based off of a custom attribute we create. And again, a character rigging for a production course covers this. Also, animating with props teaches you uh, those type of uh, techniques. But that's what maintain offset does. Now, if we were to go ahead and, again, remove the constraint, I'll do that from the outliner. We'll take a look at a few other options we have. To bring the arrow back to where it was before, I'll simply zero out its rotate parameters and head over back to our aim constraint options. All right, so maintain offset, that was uh, pretty neat. And notice underneath we have parameters for specifying our offset if we would not like to use maintain offset. But that still doesn't solve our problem of our arrow pointing directly at our target. Well, here's where the next few settings come into play. With the object selected, our arrow, let's go ahead and head over to display, transform display, local rotation axis, so we can see the axis tied to this object. As of right now, the positive x is pointing on the opposite end of our arrow. That's why when we initially apply the constraint, this end was pointing at our target and not the front of the arrow. So in order to correct this, we would need to change our aim vector. So that's our culprit here. What we need to do is make sure that instead of our aim vector being set to positive one, which would cause, again, the positive side of this object, which is its end, to point at the target object. Instead, we need to, of course, change this value to a negative one so that the opposite end, the end pointing in the negative x, will point at our target. So now, notice this, if we were to grab the target object and grab the constraint object, our arrow, and choose apply, now our arrow is going to point directly to the target the way it needs to. So that's what the aim vector is. Now, what about the up vector? Well, let's take a look at this. If we were to grab the target object and move that across our origin, you can see we get a little bit of twisting. What the up vector does is it controls the twist axis of the object we have locked down by the constraint. So you can see in this case, the up vector is set to positive y. Okay, it's in the y field. That's why, looking at our object, the y is pointing up when we apply the constraint because that's what we have defined as our up vector. But that's not the best solution for preventing twisting at all because in no time we will run into that uh, twist problem. So we'll take a look at a few other settings to remove that altogether. All right, so next we have our world up type dropdown where we can set our up vector, again, to prevent twisting. So scene up, this is going to look at the scene's natural up axis, which is, of course, positive y. That's the, the vector that's moving up. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, by default, we have the option set to vector, which still kind of looks at the scene's up axis, which is the y axis, because that's what it's set to by default. But if we wanted to, we could have the up axis set to the z axis uh, if that's what we needed in order for the constraint to work properly. It's just a matter of putting in a value of 1 here and zeroing out the other parameters. So this will define this as the z up axis. But still, that's not going to control our twist behavior at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at. The next option we have, up object. So this is exciting because with this, we can use another object as our constraint object's up vector. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. I'll just take the target and set this back to zero. And I'll grab the arrow and again, remove its constraint. Let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so 
bringing the arrow back to zero. If we want an object to control the twisting of our arrow, it's just a matter of creating one. So I'll just use a, a locator for this example, and I'll go ahead and move this up. So watch this. If we were to grab our target, grab the arrow, and choose object up, notice we now have access to our world up object field where we can define what object should be our up object. So in our case, we'll need to type in the name, the exact name of our locator, which is locator1. Now when we choose apply, everything looks the same. However, watch this. When we grab the locator and start to move that around, now we control its twisting by the position of the locator, which is really neat stuff. So if we run into any twisting, we can now use this correction object to kind of correct the twisting so that that's no longer a problem. Now you could see eventually we would still run into a little bit of twisting because we're moving across another plane. So we would need some type of complex solution to prevent the twisting altogether. If you'd like to learn more about that, again, take a look at our Character Rigging for Production course. And also, our Rigging Sea Creatures course covers that when we rig the creature's vertebrae. So that's a look at up object. Again, very helpful for moving that, the, the twisting altogether. Now, another option we have is object rotation up, which looks at the rotation of our up object and causes twisting based off of its rotation. So to take a look at that, we can always grab our arrow again, remove the constraint it has. And now we'll grab, again, the target. We'll grab our arrow. We'll still keep the world up object as a locator, but now we'll want to switch this to object rotation up. And now when we choose add or apply, you can see now the twisting of this object is going to influence the twist behavior of the constrained object. So that's what that does. And then the next choice, none, this is going to give us no twist solution. So we'll, we'll run into twisting most definitely using none. So that's basically what those options do. Chances are you work with up object or object rotation up. The next uh, choice we have is whether the constraint will be tied to an animation layer. And if you'd like to learn more about this, we have a, a tutorial in this reference library uh, course that covers how to work with this animation layer system and constraints. So do take a look at that if you're if you're interested. And then this next section controls what axis will be locked down by the constraint. So sometimes you may not want twisting at all. So if I were to, again, remove the constraint from this, this arrow, if I were to just go ahead and get rid of that and set the arrow back to zero in the channel box, we'll go ahead and apply the constraint but this time, let's go ahead and only lock down the Y and Z axis. So now when we choose Add, what you'll see is that no longer are we going to get any twisting in that object because we have disabled the X axis. We can go in and freely start to transform this axis. We could start to rotate around. We have that choice. But as of right now, again, there's no twisting at all. So this is a very neat uh, solution for, let's say, rigging eyes. You could also use it for rigging an upper arm to prevent twisting. Those are a few options you have. But that's a look at Maya's aim constraint tool. Again, a great tool to use when we want an object to point at another 